Let's see if it pops up. All right, getting there. I think it's popped up. Yep, we're streaming. All right, all right. Let's go back to recording. Um, I'm going to share my screen if you all don't mind, and I'll just tell you about. Oh, before I share my screen, I need to thank Susan for doing this last week. Susan, thank you so much for handling these details last week. I haven't even barely talked to you since then, but it was fine. It was fun. I'm sure. Thank you, Susan. I was not you. <laughs> it went well. It did. It was great. I'm sure it was awesome. I have um, no trauma. <laughs> all right. My well, internet uh, stayed live. Yeah. Um, so, okay, welcome. We believe in comics, the Friday night workshops. We're here one more time. In the summer, it's kind of hard to believe because it's super daylight out. I know it's daylight on the West Coast all the time anyway, but anyway, I <laughs> As the summer keeps progressing. Anyway, um, you're at SAW. We're a nonprofit school. Learn.sawcomics.org is where you can find out more about what we do and our courses. Um, next week is going to be a comic reading from some, we're celebrating the um, graduates of the year long program, and we're going to be reading their comics. They're going to be reading their own comics. Um, Bruce, who is here, is going to be reading. I forget who else, Michael and um, some others. And uh, we also wanna make it interactive. So we want you to be doodling what you're seeing on the screen and then we'll have a share out at the end. And, that would be really fun, I think. and um, also we have the year long certificate program coming up again in September. We really want to, um, to welcome you into it if you haven't already done it. Drawing, storytelling, narrative, history, context, reading, idea generating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, so you can learn more about that next week, okay. So sharing on social media, hashtag Friday Night Comics at uh, Comics Workshop. Um, you can share at members.sellcomics.org. And in the chat, I'll give you uh, Andy's info as well. Thanks to everybody who's, um, who has donated for these workshops and in other ways, it really helps us keep these going. Um, okay, yeah, no trolling or hate speech or explicit, et cetera. <laughs> I spell that right? I hope so. <laughs> Keep it PG-13, et cetera, et cetera. Enjoy. Um, really happy to welcome Andy Santagata back. Andy came down to, S to I almost said SVA, to SAW was our, one of our first visiting artist people after um, the pandemic. And that's um, Andy's Instagram and their links will be in the chat. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And I'm just really excited to have Andy back. Um, Andy, I don't, I got to find you on the speaker view to spotlight you, but if you're ready, we're ready. You tell us what we need to do. All right. Uh, as soon as I figure out, there we go. There we go. That's Hi. Awesome. There you are. It's me. <laughs> Andy, I see people that I taught at SAW here. I just want to say, hey, I know Amy is here. What's oh, up? Cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm Andy. I'm going to give a little spiel about myself and then we are going to draw some terrifying shit. So uh, <laughs> so my name is Andy Santagata. Uh, I am a graduate of the Center for Cartoon Studies. Um, I am here drawing monsters because I am one of the artists on uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, the new graphic novel that drops in September, by the way. Uh, I'll be at SPX talking that. Woo. So... <laughs> Uh, before that, I have had pretty extensive horror experience. Um, a lot of my indie stuff was about cryptids, particularly the Chupacabra and the Mothman. So if you mm. want to dig that stuff up. And I'm most known for doing horror comedy about demons and time travel. So I like to dip my toes in a lot of weird occultism stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to um, kind of walk you guys through my process of how I design monsters, uh, what makes them scary, what makes them fun to draw. I can talk a little bit about the design process behind the Plush Trap Chaser in uh, Out of Stock, which was the story that I illustrated. Um, fun fact, I am known for drawing terrifying teeth. And if there is anybody in here because of Five Nights at Freddy's, you will find that funny based on the story I got hired to draw. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna screen share and we are going to hope that works. Yeah. Is this good? Can you see this? No? Wait. No. 
No. Uh, believe it or not, I went to college for video game design before comics, and you can all make fun of me for that. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, yay! Good. Okay. Sweet. All right. So uh, if I could just figure out how to turn my camera off because I use a Surface Pro, and you're going to see my face all tilted, looking ridiculous. There we go. All right. Can you still see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So uh, first I thought I would kind of walk y'all through a drawing of an existing monster to kind of uh, show off the features I think about when I'm translating something scary into an existing thing. And then we are going to draw our own. Uh, so to start with, ooh, can you see this? Yes. Good. Great. My undo button is uh, hidden by the bar. So this is going to be very exciting. <laughs> So uh, a monster I've been thinking about a lot lately is from the TV show slash video game series, The Witcher. Uh, there is an episode in season one, which is about this sort of like vampiric creature called Astriga. And the backstory behind this monster is that she used to be a royal princess, but she contr contracted this sort of vampiric uh, disease. And so they locked her in a coffin in an abandoned castle where she doesn't see sunlight and becomes this, you know, inhuman evil thing crying out in pain. And, uh, Geralt, the titular witcher, the hero of our story, has to go and deal with her, but obviously he has a lot of pathos for this because she used to be human. So that's a lot, <laughs> but I'm gonna walk you through how I might perhaps draw that Striga in a comic um, to kind of get you used to that idea. So I always start with gestures whenever I'm designing characters. And the idea behind the Striga is that she's sort of like got stunted growth because she was imprisoned at a young age. So I just drop the head and do a bit of a hunch. So she's kind of been like trapped in the darkness, literally in a coffin, physically stunting her growth. So I want to put some thought into how her spine arches and how she literally, you know, imaginary coffin, right? Uh, can't actually outstretch. The other thing about the Striga in The Witcher, which I find interesting, is that obviously she used to be a princess, but because she's kind of been in the dark for so long, she's lost a lot of those features, but maintains enough for Geralt to feel kind of, you know, freaked out by it because she seems just human enough, right? So she's got these like hanging strands of hair in the show, which I find really interesting. Uh, the other thing when you're designing monsters that's super important is scale, which The Witcher does really well. So I'm gonna switch colors here so I can draw a little Geralt for you. So the, the scale between the Striga and Geralt in the show is very specific in that Geralt is just very slightly smaller than her, but not so small that she actually looks like a giant. So I'm actually gonna draw a little Geralt in here for scale. So you're kind of getting. So the idea behind Geralt being only a little bit smaller than the Striga, being actually scarier than if he was much larger, showing her off as actually being like a 14-year-old girl trapped in a coffin versus a much larger monster that he might find difficulty fighting is the uncanny valley factor. So you know that she's supposed to be human and you know that this is not the size that a 14-year-old girl should be. So something's immediately wrong. Geralt's already kind of a buff dude, right? So he usually doesn't have any trouble fighting monsters. But because this 14-year-old girl seems larger than Geralt, you already know something's a little bit off, which, you know, genius level of monster design. Setting things very slightly off is often a lot more effective in terrifying people than like going whole hog, if you know what I mean. So we've got her hunchy spine. We've kind of got her like, you know, hair here. We've got our poor witcher not really doing so hot with his sword. Uh, the Striga's arms kind of like lay across the floor because she kind of uh, walks on all fours because of her stunted growth. So a feature of monster design uh, when you're actually thinking about creating from scratch is you want to think about how these monsters interact with the world, how they sense things, how they move, and how that would complement their physical attributes, right? So the way that she moves is kind of shuffling. And I've always, you know, used that kind of... Uh, Y'all see the movie Alien <laughs> slash yeah. Aliens? Yeah, exactly. That kind of a, a, a motion. So you want to think about what limbs would facilitate that kind of motion. I'm getting a little scribbly here because I've been talking, but uh, long fingers, always terrifying and significant uh, when you're designing monsters that seem to be moving fast or with alacrity. Uh, you can play with tropes a lot when you're designing monsters because people expect certain traits when they see physical attributes of monsters. Like... Uh, for instance, shorthand for doing aliens has always been giant head, gray skin, long fingers, 
kind of unable to communicate with humans. You can play with that to kind of give your monster alien characters immediate characteristics without kind of falling into just drawing a gray. Uh, where was I? I had a whole list of awesome <laughs> Striga points. Ah, the texture. So a little bit harder to represent in drawing comics, but in the actual Witcher show, you can see the spine of the Striga and you can see that it's kind of like damp which is incredibly gross and awesome, but uh, signifies a sort of like rebirth idea in that this girl, because she's been trapped as a vampire in this coffin for so long, has kind of come out as a non-human figure entirely new. So you can learn a lot from just looking at a monster and understanding sort of where it comes from. Uh, those are my Striga thoughts. I'm gonna open a new canvas. And if you guys want to break out your favorite drawing materials right now, we're going to design some friggin' monsters. <laughs> so, <laughs> hell yeah. Cool. I have notes. I'm shuffling along. Somebody was asking what brush you're using on uh, Clip Studio. Oh, um, okay. It is in Japanese, which I do not speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, let me look up my materials, actually, if you guys are really quick. Uh, can I pop, 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 pop? If this is not in the first couple rows, I'll make a I'll make a point. Uh, you know what? I'll post it in the thing in the chat when all this is done. All the brushes that I've used, so sure. that you guys can. I love this brush, by the way, because like I learned to ink. You know, Oop, there we go. I love lag. I learned to ink IRL. So uh, this is kind of the closest thing I've gotten to like a crappy sharpie or whatever. Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna close. There we go. There we go. All right. So, when you are designing a monster, like I said, there's a couple things that you really want to think about that I'm going to actually list down here so that you guys can copy. Uh, if you like, this is not a class. Uh, so, you've got your senses, which is how does this monster perceive the world around it? Uh, how does it see? Does it does it see at all? Does it kind of move around by feeling? Does it kind of just have a sixth sense for like where things are, even though you can't see its eyes, like Pyramid Head, for instance? I know he's wearing a mask, but roll with it. Uh, how does this monster interact with the world? Because a key point of monsters is that obviously they sense, feel, perceive, and interact with the world a little bit differently than humans. And, you know, we can use that to our advantage to make them terrifying or humanizing, whatever we want. But uh, for instance, you know, when you think about a vampire, they've got fangs, right? Because they bite people and they suck blood. You know? uh, if you're drawing Frankenstein's monster, you want to go all like, sorry about the lag. <laughs> Classic Frankie. You've got your stitches. You've got your bolts. You know what's going on with this dude. You immediately know what his deal is, right? <laughs> but also... Classic Frankenstein's monsters, uh, you can change that design to kind of have different feels to your Frankie. The typical giant lumbering Frankie works because, you know, he's made of all a bunch of different body parts and you assume he's clumsy, young Frankenstein.jpg. But my personal Frankenstein uh, favorite is the one in the original book where he's all solemn and, you know, thinking about humanity and stuff. So if you've seen the horrible TV series Penny Dreadful, they do a great job doing a sad Frankie in that. Uh, they do not do a great job writing a sad Frankie, though, unfortunately. So when about your senses, you're thinking about how the monsters perceive things. Uh, see, feel, etc. eat. Monsters eat. What do they eat and how do they eat it? Do they need a lot of teeth to eat this? Is it scarier, for instance, uh, if you guys have seen Cabin in the Woods, there's this one monster that's kind of like a little ballerina girl. And she's got like otherwise human features, you know, here except for the fact that her mouth is going from side to side, sort of in this gigantic lamprey-esque uh, configuration, but the rest of her is completely normal. So you kind of got the rest of her looking kind of very uh, human to emphasize how scary that mouth is. So a lot of monsters in Cabin in the Woods kind of follow this sort of uh, technique because that movie is kind of all about showcasing all the different kinds of monsters in trope form and how the characters interact with it. Uh, 
So once you figure out how your monster is kind of interacting with the world, what its deal is, you're going to want to think about how those senses are used to form physical aspects, like I was saying. Using the vampire example, you got a lot of different kinds of vampires, right? Uh, the reason why vampires have fangs is so they rip the flesh of others so as to suck their blood. But uh, there's all kinds of twists on this, like <clears throat> in the YA series Cirque du Freak, which is exactly the thing that it sounds like. The vampires have really long nails with which to carve people open and suck their blood instead so they don't have fangs, uh, which is a very practical change, but somehow a little bit more gruesome to me. Uh, and they make kind of a point in that series about how the vampires that use their fangs are like, you know, much more uncouth and oh my, uh, how dare they kind of uh, is savagery sort of a deal. So you can kind of play with those different tropes of vampires to make your vampire hierarchies. <laughs> Uh, aside from physical aspects, the most obvious thing you want to think about is what are its things that it does as a monster, aka monster powers. <laughs> blood sucking. Is it, you know, an, if it is a thing that crawls in the night, what caused it to do such, right? Is it a, you know, humanoid creature that exists in the night like a vampire? Is it something that's been forced to exist in the night like the Striga? And uh, how long has it been in the dark? Is it blind now because of that? And how are you going to express it? What other senses have been heightened to make up for that? Don't worry, I'm going to draw a monster with all of this later. <laughs> so uh, those are kind of the three main principles. And now I'm going to draw some monsters. So a monster type that I've been thinking about a lot lately is uh, a biblical angel. The idea behind biblical angels is that they're kind of terrifyingly all-seeing and all-knowing. All-seeing all-knowing horrifying i was uh raised catholic no longer catholic so this is extra scary for me like you know uh <laughs> not really i love demons though um all seeing all knowing uh they are covered in eyes because they're sort of just a cars right they can perceive everything all of your sins like santa claus so a million eyes this is all in the actual bible by the way uh a lot of people think of angels as being little seraphic beings with like wings who play harps or whatever but no they're terrifying flaming sword wielding multi-eyed four-winged beasts <laughs> amazing uh four wings is another thing that they're mentioned to have so this is all pretty practical stuff right this is all like this is how you literally would design a biblical angel what do you want to think about is what scares you about this right so for me it's a sort of omnipotent idea that they can see everything on on an emotional level right but on a physical level, something that I'm thinking of with all these eyes is you see those lotus pod uh, shock images? Those freak me out, right? You can utilize the stuff that you literally don't want to see or experience when you're designing monsters. So if I were to design a sort of biblical angel, I'm going to use a diamond shape because I want to sort of hover creepily above the ground. There's its spine where it would be. So I don't want it to look too humanoid because I don't want it to resemble anything that looks too familiar, right? Because I really want to go for something super unfamiliar with this. But I still want you to be able to tell what's going on. So I'm going to go with the obvious, you know, four wings here. Just to sort of, and I'm going to go like a bit creepy with them. I want them to look a bit like chicken wings because I don't want this to look canny or, or safe, if that makes sense. Later on, we're going to go through and apply texture to this. So form is starting to appear. Very cool. So something I want to think about with this biblical angel is, does it even have a head? Does it even have eyes? Or is it just sort of covered in eyes? I want it to be humanoid enough to feel uncanny. So I think I'm going to make a design choice here to give it a head and arms. I'm going to hunch it over like Bigfoot so it looks like it doesn't know what it's going to do. Uh, easy way to creep people out, elongate the arms and legs. It is a cheat factor that has been used in millennia of horror uh or don't think the world has existed for that long you see it when people do bigfoot uh the person who trained me to design monsters was uh steve Bissett, who did swamp thing so if you wonder why i ink like this that was why all right so we've got a form we've got some shapes we need some eyes i do not want these eyes to be anywhere uh where human eyes are but i want them to be everywhere so the trick with designing horror and all that stuff is you automatically do not want to draw stuff that freaks you out, right? If it scares you, you kind of don't want to interact with it. 
So it's finding this sort of balance between what actually freaks you out and what you like to draw. Just freaky enough to make you creeped out, but not so creepy that you can't physically look at your comics anymore. <laughs> so it's the secret. And you'll find that you have like little horror superpowers that, uh, oh, these are looking like boils, sick. Awesome, yeah. Uh, you'll find that you'll have little horror superpowers that other people don't. Like I love drawing teeth. Uh, dental horror freaks me out, but not as much as other stuff. So I kind of find a niche in that because I really enjoy I wish I could give this angel teeth. Should I? Nope. No. It's creepier because it doesn't eat. It doesn't consume things and doesn't understand human emotions. I'll do something with teeth after this. So there we go. The other thing when you're iterating on a on a monster is uh, having a mix of kind of hyper realism and non realism. This kind of works with whatever style that. Uh, you have just kind of find where your like baseline is for realism here because obviously I draw in a really cartoony style right so uh, if I push it to be slightly more realistic it gets <laughs> more grody if you personally have a super photorealistic style you might want to find uh, different ways to kind of work around that all right so I cut this angel off here because that's a PG-13 workshop, but I don't think angels are wearing fancy loincloths or anything like that. So the other thing about uh, designing monsters is thinking about textures. When you're, when you're thinking about inking, you kind of always want to be thinking about motion and gesture, but always textures. So this is where you can kind of go completely ham with iterating on your monster, right? Uh, if you're a horror fan, you're probably already thinking of some of your favorite monsters and the varying textures upon them. Uh, Something that I think is really cool is if you look at old inks of Swamp Thing, for instance, uh, he's got like a soft mossy kind of a look uh, in the 80s years, but early on he looks a lot more slimy, kind of like seaweed. Um, a lot of monsters who are, you know, doing the stuck in the dark kind of thing have very taut skin and an easy way to creep people out with that is to make them just damp, super gross. Again, I've watched Aliens slash Aliens recently. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, textures, man. So I'm gonna give this guy uh, some textures on his wings so you actually know what you're looking at here and they don't look like dragonfly wings or fairy wings or whatever. So I love to ink. By the way, this pen, right, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Clip Studio Paint, by the way, if you haven't actually like, uh, I really do want these to like weird little chicken legs. Um, if you haven't swapped over from Clip Studio Paint from Photoshop, super recommend. It's definitely a lot better for comics. So the reason why I keep harping on about this chicken leg thing is uh, if you start thinking, okay, he's looking like a spider now. We got to fix this. <laughs> uh, is uh, when it comes to wings or when, sorry, when it comes to demons, the kind of mythos behind them, right? Is that, uh, you know, kind of God made them first and then he thought they were kind of a bit shit and they rebelled and now they live in hell and they hate him. Uh, perfect emo song. So uh, so they, uh, demons share a lot of aspects with angels, right? Because they're kind of brethren here. So you, I, even though in my little monster world that I'm creating here, angels would be as scary as demons. I, I can bring some of those aspects into each of these designs. Let's make these wings a little more angelic though, since that's what we're going for. Oh, right. The chicken wing thing. I never explained that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, right. God's making all these creatures, right? And they're not working out so well for him. So. Uh, he's reusing a lot of parts and I want to use parts that uh, I think that perhaps God might find useful but humans might find a bit silly. There you go. There's the guy. He wants to judge you. All right. So another thing I want to do is give him a sort of scepter uh, an accessory, not just to balance him out, but also to show that he's sort of a reigning uh, author authoritarian figure in the kingdom of, of uh, Monster Heaven over here. So do another layer. Always do things on new layers, guys. So adding like little details to your monsters to kind of, just like in good character design, kind of give them uh, character details or great shorthand uh, for telling stories immediately visually without having to actually say it in the words. Uh, last thing I'm going to do with this guy, obviously, just to hammer home the angel thing, is a... Uh, <laughs> 
You know what? We can make this creepy, right? We can definitely make this creepier. I played a monster camp recently, and there's an outfit pack with uh, Damien the Demon, and he's got all these broken halos just kind of around him, like a, a belly dancer. Let's try some of that. Very creepy. A lot of multitudes. Terrifying multitudes. There we go. Aw, look at him. He's judging you and hates you. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, uh, Monster the First. Let's do one that's a little less uh, body horror. Yeah. <laughs> how are we going to apply this without... Um, well, let's leave him up for a second while I talk. Uh, how can we apply these principles um, to something that's more creepy or you know, narratively terrifying than going outright body horror? I love to draw outright body horror, but writing wise, you know, you leave yourself a lot more room when you're writing like a mm, Jason than a this guy over here, right? So, all right. So let's see, let's think of a monster. I had a little short list of emergency monsters that I could do here, but uh, you know, it's more fun to make one up. Oh, let's go with the, the Frankenstein thing. So Frankenstein's monster, right? The base idea behind the concept of a Frankenstein's monster type monster is that it cobbles together varying other human parts to create a whole, right? Which is a pretty cool concept. So maybe we could roll with that a little bit. The neat thing about cobbling together human parts is that they do not all have to be from the same human. Is it scarier if they are from the same human? Mm, choices. So uh, I played Dragon Age 2 recently, and without spoilers, there's a horrifying version of trying to stitch together a person from other humans. So uh, I always start with a head and then a gesture. <clears throat> a gesture. So uh, since I want this Frankie to be hulking, let's make him hulk. So those are shoulder blades. Uh, I'm going to do one with not super long arms. Oh, he's looking a little werewolfy. Okay, so there you go. There you've got a basis of a of a Frankie there. How smart do I want this Frankie to be? I like my Frankies to have an amount of intelligence, so I'm gonna want to give him a bit more of a humanoid face so that you can actually like uh, relate to him a little bit. Uh, pro tip: If you actually want to humanize your monsters a little bit, the expression is where you want to go. Uh, you can kind of just have a hideous spider beast with a million legs as long as it has not a human face. That's terrifying. But an expressive face that you can actually relate to, you know, uh, you'll be able to humanize it just as such. So I'm going to make him Victorian because I have been thinking about Jack the Ripper lately. Man, you guys have a lot of dirt on me, huh? <laughs> so uh, I've been working on this graphic novel called History High. So I've been doing a lot of er, historical research. People had a lot of they all wore their hair the exact same way between the years of 1799 to 1900, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I got a little rockabilly here. Um, but, uh, yeah, historians are going to, like, totally make fun of me for that. Um, so I'm going classic Frankie with this one, but I did want to go a little Victorian, so I'm going to give him societies. Munchops. Love munchops. Oh, when you're designing historical stuff, you also want to think about regions. Jack the Ripper, obviously. English. So uh, you want to go with a more... Um, oh, Elvisy. That's no good. Go with a more um, English-inspired series of haircuts. All right, so let's get to the actual Frankie part, right? Uh, Frankenstein eggs Jack the Ripper. The obvious answer here is he's a serial killer who takes people's body parts and stitches them together back onto himself, right? Durr. So uh, the classic Frankie is always segmented into limbs, and there's a reason for that. It seems easiest for someone to medically attach limbs, you know, to the other. Uh, so... You're going to be thinking about your segments here, right? Let's put his hands up. So he's going to be segmented here at the elbows, at the shoulders. Uh, I'm going to give him an outfit, but there, he's wearing pants now. All right. And then first I'm going to lay out the sort of a general humanoid shape because we know he's going to be a humanoid, right? And then I can sort of do something a little more advanced. All right. I'm going to pop on another layer here and draw in a different color so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So here's the planning stage, right? Uh, first, I'm going to plan out his body here. And then I'm going to do the face. So I wanted to do some segmented lines here. Like I was saying about the whole, like, you know, limb thing. Much easier. Uh, 
in a lot of serial killer stories, these guys tend to end up having a weird like doctor level um, sense of where things go. So maybe we could do some stomach stitches in here. Like he had to actually put some guts in there. So this is all just me kind of planning out where stuff is going to go. Um, wrist stitches. I love visible stitches on a Frankenstein character, not just because it's aesthetically pleasing, but it's aesthetically pleasing uh, and great shorthand. So neck bolts. Frankie has neck bolts because of that is where Dr. Frankenstein ostensibly attached the electricity to him to bring him to life or whatever. So there's two schools of thought on Frankenstein neck bolts, right? Neck bolts on the neck and neck bolts in the head. Uh, I would argue that they're effectively kind of doing the same uh, or a similar thing, but if you're going to do neck bolts in the head, it implies that the doctor has screwed with the inside of his mind a little bit. Like, clearly it's affected him somehow. Uh, whether you want to think that makes him super dumb or super smart is up to you. Um, the neck bolts is more of an aesthetic choice. Uh, bringing him down lower kind of implies that his head hasn't been screwed with, and you see that a lot in more like pop culture Frankensteins, like the rockabilly style. So uh, because his neck is so short here, I'm actually going to give him head bolts. So I'm going to make sure he is like completely out of it. Uh, a lot of neurotypical people seem to find lobotomy stuff very terrifying, but I think it's interesting, said the depressed guy. Please don't do that to me, though. <laughs> All right. So uh, Frankie's face. Uh, like I was saying, I want to make it more humanoid. So I'm going to go with like a just very, very normal, regular guy face, a little menacing. But a little sad. I like my monsters sad. I mean, you know, <laughs> sad or scary, ideally both. And then, uh, because I like to think he's having a little bit of trouble with this whole body uh, not being his thing. He's not doing so hard to actually controlling his facial expressions. Uh, we're going to come back to that later. But I want him to look a, like he's barely trying to keep it together, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde style. Um, so that's the humanizing aspect there. Let's do the actual monster part. So let me lower the opacity on this so I can see what I'm doing. Oh God, I inked on the same, look, you've witnessed a tragedy here, me inking on the same layer. Let's pretend I didn't do that. All right. Um, this. That's it. That's it. By the way, uh, if you guys are designing your own monsters, I would very much like to see what you come up with. Feel free to tag me. Uh, so when it comes to stitches, you've kind of got two options. You've got, these, then you've got these. Obviously, if you're like actually trying to do like uh, the more detailed you make these gory details, uh, the more people will not want to look at them. And subsequently, they will actually kind of like how you can't look away from uh, a plane crash, but you don't want to overdo it, right? So, man, I really wish I wouldn't have made on that layer. Let's just, you're going to watch magic happen. Ba -ba -ba -ba. There we go. All right. Um, so I want him to have an outfit that exposes enough of the whole Frankenstein's monster thing that you can see what's going on while still kind of reading as Jack the Ripper. So something I've learned also while working on History High is doing things literally historically accurately doesn't translate all the time as being historical to people. Like they didn't have, you know, colonial style, uh, let me draw this ponytail thing, uh, you know, back in the Jack the Ripper's day, right? the sort of Thomas Jefferson look. <laughs> but it's something that I could throw in here to kind of imply that he is from quote-unquote old-timey times, nebulously 1700 to the 1899, right? Uh, so I want his sleeves to be ripped, not just for the pun, but so you can actually see some of the stitches. Uh, the thing to accentuate muscles, um, if you're using stitches as well, uh, is to kind of add some here so that it can kind of hint at what uh, the shape of things might be. So aside from utility, you can kind of use that to guide the eye. Uh, let's give him like a big, dumb, like Beethoven coat, because I think that'd be funny. And also very, uh, I watched Phantom of the Opera lately also. <laughs> oh, man, he's giving me Helsing vibes. This is a, this is a whole nother thing now. <laughs> All right. Uh, gloves right he's a serial killer he really doesn't want people to know who he is so that kind of hides his frankenstein-y uh, wrists so you're going to want to add some stitches here just to emphasize that doesn't actually stop there i'm going to fill in some parts here just so you see what you're looking at 
Well, I'm pretty sick, pretty sick. All right. Um, something that I usually do at this point, because I like to ham it up a little bit, is add little details that aren't super realistic, but kind of give the monster a little bit of flavor. Like here, I might actually put some thread stitches, not stitches, stitches on uh, Jack's gloves to kind of emphasize stuff. Uh, I know it's cheesy, but that's how I like to do things. <laughs> so there you have it. You've got your Victorian Frankenstein serial killer. Uh, you can oh. tell a decent amount of things from him. He's probably serial killing because of the thing shoved in his head. Again, going us to the uh, neck bolts. Um, if I was coloring Jack here, actually, in limited color, uh, I would definitely be emphasizing... Uh, let me watch this. The whole blood thing, right? So... Oh, that is not bright enough. When you're working with lim limited color in black and white, you can do some really sick stuff to emphasize. There we go. Sort of where you want, again, the eye to draw, but also uh, the trick to doing blood splatter, I'm just using like a brush brush here, is to, um, oh, how do I even describe this? If you're using a real brush and a stylish brush, the trick is kind of the same. So normally when you're using a brush brush, you want to like flow it from one way to the other like this, right? But when you're doing blood, like splatter splatter, the way to fake it, if you want to ruin a real life brush, but if you're using a stylus, it doesn't matter, is to push against. So instead of dragging, you want to go, uh, and then do sort of a, as blood splatters away, it fades like that. Check that out. Uh, Yonan Vasquez uses a toothbrush for this, which power to the guy, but uh, I can never get that to work because things just kind of splatter everywhere. So yeah, you've got yourself a Frankie. Let's do, well, ooh, <laughs> let's do one more monster. I hope you guys are drawing some monsters too. I really want to see what y'all come up with. So let's see. According to my own monster rules, I am going to have to think of things that scare me, things that I like to draw, and imagine the way that this thing would kind of perceive the world. So since I've been harping on teeth a lot, let's do something with teeth. Teeth. Um, if you're enhancing one sense, kind of daredevil style, the logical thing to do is to lower the others to kind of develop a sort of emphasis. Again, rules exist for you to break them. So kind of play with what actually feels right. But, you know, any horror fan knows that if you go a little bit too hard, it gets less scary. You know, uh, the Cloverfield monster is scarier when you can't see it and all that. So, um... Let's just do something really, really classic. Let's do like a ghost girl, like high school ghost girl with terrifying ballerina cabin in the woods teeth mouth. So I really, really love doing a uh, hunched over kind of humanoid uh, monsters like that. So let's see. Um, so if you've watched The Ring, that tends to be my general inspiration for uh, ghost girls as it were. Um, Jinji Ito, side note, absolutely freaking amazing at um, doing humanoid characters uh, with an amount of Uncanny Valley that kind of hits you a little later. Uh, the slow burn, absolute master of the slow burn. So if I can channel some Jinji Ito here, hopefully, I mean, if I can get like a toenail's worth of Jinji Ito talent, that'd be kind of amazing. So I want this to be like a haunted college girl. You know, the kind of, like, person that you would see at the end of your dorm hall, who's, like, she, before she turns around, she seems totally normal, right? But then she does, and it's like, Argh. So. There's a scrunchie. You remember when everybody was talking about Visco girls? Was that, was that, like, a real trend, or were they just trying to get us to buy stuff? Okay. So. Typically, when I do, like, uh, designs and stuff, I do an underdrawing, and then I go over it again with inks, just to see what I'm doing. So she's kind of got a scrunchie, like I was saying. So she's kind of got your average, quote unquote, average uh, college girl appearance. So the thing with average, right? There's no, uh, there's no real thing as average or normal. But if you play with people's perceptions, as in what you, what people actually perceive, you can start to freak them out a little bit. So I'm going to give her a hoodie because she goes to college, University of Monster School. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Uh, if you're doing just like busts of things, uh, easy way to get a little more life in them is to kind of add fingers. So I want, again, uh, her fingers to be sort of uncanny. So it hints at uh, things aren't quite right here. All right, so here's here's the important part. Here's her face. If you'll notice, if you're doing a character that has a giant unhinged jaw, you get a lot less space to draw the eyes, which kind of goes into the whole height in one sense, lower in another sense thing. But uh, you'll find that if you're making narrative decisions, your character design decisions are also made for you. So. Uh, I wish the undo button wasn't hidden by this. All right, so if you're unhinging a jaw, you have a bunch of different options. You've got the Muppet jaw, the, aka the Venus flytrap. You've got the like actual like, you know, human jaw. Or you can look at like you know animals like sharks, uh, whales, terrifying teeth. They're basically bristles, um, incorporating a lot of uh, animal characteristics. Not like really basic stuff like a wolf or whatever, but like really creepy, like very honest trench creatures. Uh, flipping through some National Geographics and incorporating a lot of those aspects is how a lot of the uh, um, Bronze Age horror cartoonists kind of got a lot of their ideas. Uh, Steve Pissett once told the story about a rotisserie chicken. Um, if you find him, you should ask him about it. All right, so I'm going to go with the Venus flytrap style here because I find that to be the most terrifying. All right, so. Jaws have two parts, the upper and the lower. My personal favorite thing to draw when I'm drawing teeth is too many teeth. The more visible the gums are, the more scared people get for some reason. When you, oh, lag. Oh, Clip Studio. Dang, all right. <laughs> when you're uh, drawing unhinged jaws, it gives you a, a great way to do is sort of uh, fluids, for lack of a better word. Kind of a, uh, great part about horror very very easy shortcut to get people scared um so i'm gonna have her kind of drooling blood here uh not just because it's aesthetic and scary but because some for some reason people find it rather horrifying when younger people are incapable of doing normal people things kind of like uh if you see an old person running really really fast you're like that is a vampire and or a demon <laughs> uh it kind of works in the reverse which is a little bit ableist of people but like working with people's perceptions uh, rolls eyes. I have really bad teeth, so maybe I can terrify people that way. <laughs> so uh, when you're working with teeth, I want to shape out the jaw first. And then I just kind of iterate the where the tooth line is going to be. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Gums. Cracked lips. So you want to go really abstract when you're doing stuff like uh, too many teeth or foliage or whatever, because uh, you don't want to break your hand by drawing a gazillion teeth and leaves. But oftentimes uh, the thing as a whole looks better when you're kind of abstracting it uh, so that the eye doesn't get tired. So uh, spit gets stringier when there's blood in it, if you're a body horror person who is wondering. So there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, she's having a bad day. But she also, is, I don't want her to look tragic. I want her to look like she's going to eat your face. So uh, let's, unlike my Frankenstein earlier, let's give her, you know what? Angry eyebrows actually make her less scary. That's the other thing. Like I said, if you push a little too hard and go a little too whole hog, you will lose it. So what if we tried to give her a sort of emptier appearance? Uh, by utilizing aspects from um, stuff like vintage cartoons or old TV shows that you're naturally a little bit scared of. If you're like a Zoomer or a millennial or a Gen Xer, you probably like have a hidden memory of like being vaguely scared of Gumby or Little Orphan Annie or, you know, things with weird eyes that existed in the 50s. Reaching back in there and kind of like thinking about the things that you were afraid to look at as a kid can be a really effective tool because now you're an adult. You're a lot less scared of it, but you're probably still drawing inspiration. Uh, again, simplifying the eyes here, I think brings out her teeth. So, uh, all right, I have designed a sorority girl who wants to eat your face, but doesn't look like she's capable. And she's been chomping on a lot of people lately. Uh, if this was a comic at this point, I would be turning off the, aha, the sketch layer 
uh, and kind of filling in the parts that I missed with the inks. So adding in some shadows here. This is just non monstery comic stuff. So here we are with our eyes, right? They might be scary if I filled them in, they might not. Uh, depending on how you've inked kind of the rest of your monster, uh, you can add volume and weight by adding, um, you know, more spot blacks. But I don't know if she's going to be scary if I fill the eyes in, so I'm going to give it a shot. See, I think, I think that makes it less scary. I really, really do. Don't be afraid to screw around. You might find the things that seem anticipated, like that you anticipate to be like completely obviously, you know, horror tropey things that you should throw in there uh, might not work as well. Um, oh, she's great. She's clearly uh, uh, emphasis on her sense of taste there, not so much her sense of sight. Um, if I wanted to draw out the rest of her though, uh, I've been really harping on the whole Nightcrawler thing lately, but if we encountered this sorority girl, like, you know, oops, in the dark in a dorm room eating one of her classmates, right? Because that's clearly what she's doing, as you can tell. Um, you would then want to think about how you'd want to build out the rest of her body. Uh, what happened to her? In your horror story, narratively, what caused this, like, zombification or cannibalism to begin? How fast does it act? That would determine the outfit that she's wearing. How long has she been a zombie? That would determine the state of the outfit that she's wearing. A lot of uh, character design principles can actually be applied to monster design. Uh, and if you balance that with the whole, draw what you're scared of, but keep it on the side of, uh, not keep it on the side, draw what you're scared of, but also find a way to draw things that you like to even it out so you don't have horrible nightmares every night, you know? Uh, when I was doing the plush trap, for instance, uh, my original design had very hyper realistic eyes. And I, uh, that was a thing that the story called for, but I had to screw around with that a little bit because the level of um, cartooning detail in each panel uh, that I had to draw, depending on how zoomed in or out we were, would change the level of detail I would have to draw for the plush trap, which meant that I would have to adjust the hyper-realism in the eye to be more or less realistic to kind of match. So there are, I can't draw you what it looks like because of Scholastic is going to kill me. But uh, <laughs> if this, if it were a person, you know, you might find that this is infinitely scarier than like, you know, Zalgoing it, right? Uh, because of the unexpected. So Man, we have about 10 minutes left. Do you think I should draw another spook em? <laughs> Another scare em? <laughs> Maybe we can take a look and see what people have done. Oh, yes, that would be great. How do I hand it over to you? Um, oh. stop, stop sharing, and then we can see if people have done stuff. Oh, yeah, we've already got some hands Sweet. up. And actually, oh, yes. and if you can do me a favor and raise your Zoom hand, it'll be in, under reactions. That, um, um, that sort of pushes you up to the sort of top of the queue, and then we'll, we'll see what some people drew. All um, right, let's see. I'm going to uh, the spotlight. There we go. That did it. Okay. So, yeah, we've got a few people with their hands up. Let's take a look. Yes. Okay. We'll go to Allison, ND, Yesha, Walter. Wow, we've got a bunch up. All oh, right. So, we'll go to Allison. Um, there we go. Hello. Hey, everyone. Um, okay. So I had a couple ideas for this. Um, I decided to do something that I called the anxiety lesion. Um, legion. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, and it's kind of funny, like the theme of this workshop, because it's also something that I've had to do in therapy where I've had to draw something that's been stressing me out as like a monster or some kind of animal. Um, so... <laughs> um, a common way, a way I've described my anxiety in therapy is that it's like a giant flock of birds that sort of forms together. There's no like one specific fear. There's many fears and many worries and many stressors. So I drew like several, like a number of birds coming together to form one giant bird monster. Um, I was looking at like pictures of vultures and 
baby owls because those ones really freak me oh, out. Oh, those are terrifying. The gift with <laughs> yeah. their faces, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and oh, then this in the great. background, I have like more birds joining the mess. <laughs> and then there's me running away and saying nope as per not unlike Jordan Peele um, or <laughs> Kiki Paul. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, this was my uh, monster. I love the whole emotional motif of the Legion of Crows. Yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Allison. We'll go to ND next and then Yisha, then Walter, then Susan. I'll write that in the chat. When ND um, comes on, we'll go. There we go. Oh, hi. Hello. Um, I drew this, um, the one, the girl, not the dog. Ah. Um, I don't know why I drew it. I, I have a lot of dolls, but they kind of creep me out now for some reason. So, totally. um, I tried to draw something like a doll, but she also wants to play with me because I haven't played with them in such a long time. And I tried doing the hair like Raggedy Ann. That's what's so scary about dolls, you know, they try to guilt you into, you know, playing with them by saying they care about you and they miss you, but it just makes it so creepy somehow, you know? I love it. And I like the face. Oh, and um, I guess I have to show mine too. Oh. So, um, sorry. <laughs> Very quickly. Where am I? So, this is a Ooh. nurse. I don't know if it's backwards for you, but it says no. if you don't like to care, we can always call Child Protective Services. Oh. <laughs> so, man. Ooh. Totally getting like World War II plague doc slash plague yeah. doctor vibes. Yeah. So, yep. Very Medical cool. horror is really real, especially if you've, you know, personally lived through uh it so yeah no doubt for real thanks so much all right uh we'll go to yesha let's see please there we go hi so i kind of came to this thinking i was thinking in terms of cute monsters like sesame street style (laughs) oh i apologize that's what i was going to do but then you know when you were talking about all the things that scare you and stuff like that so um yeah so this is not what I had intended to do, but this is just what I did in the moment. But oh shoot! Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Oh, uh, whoa! Wow! Awesome. Pumpkin spice. <laughs> the colors are exquisite. That's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, show it. See if I can uh, change my settings. Sorry. Uh, I could. I don't know if you can see him. But to take the anyway, blur off. Yeah. It's adding to the sort of horror uh, ambience. He's kind of coming alive. at you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, those wow, teeth. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Teeth. <laughs> and he lives on your, he eats your hopes and he grows strong on your, on ignorance. Oh, Whoa. like a sleep paralysis demon. There you go. Anyway. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Okay, cool. We'll go to um, Walter and then see me. Let's see. Thanks so much, Aisha. Oh, Yasha. Ooh. Oh. oh. That's all. Oh, I like that lamprey mouth. A little less psychological and a little more D&D, but it's uh, just a blind uh, something or other. Nice. And D&D is great. The continuity of arms on a snake that was weird. Oh, I super dig it. D&D, the monster manuals, amazing, absolutely amazing inspiration for this sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I, the texture and the blindness, I was picking up on things you were saying as you were going. I yeah, just, I dig the damp. The damp, cool. That's it. Thanks, Walter. All right, see me. If you are there, we'll go. Uh, there we go. All right. Hi, everyone. Ah. Whoa. This, okay, I hope everyone can start. No. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm. I kind of got inspired by the Jack Drifters Ripper. Uh, Frankenstein esque thing. So I um, did a bit um, like someone leg like, getting torn off, and then the ripper went, um, Oops, nope, no. <laughs> I like the blood that's spearing at you. <laughs> with, nice. with, with, uh, what's this called? A hook. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Oh, I love the expression. Classic. Like he hardly <laughs> believe what he did. 
That's the tragedy of all of this. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, we'll go to Susan. Let's see. There we go. All right, I was inspired by the last one oh. that Andy, Andy drew. And I really appreciated you showing us how you kind of approached drawing these and thought through the parts and then just did this amazing gesture drawings. So it was fun. That's awesome. It reminds me of Quentin Blake, uh, the one, wow. the illustrator who does um, all those Roald Dahl books. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. when people do teeth. I love when people do gestures. Cool. <laughs> Well, you inspired the teeth. Um, oh, and that, that was cool. <laughs> like the uh, Pippi Longstocking stockings as well. Drawing from yeah. children's media. I mean, you know, well, with all the things I've been saying about Five Nights and Freddy's and all, which isn't children's media, but draws from obviously the animatronics, you know, gold mine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cool. Sweet. Thanks, Susan. We'll go to uh, Anjali next, and then Shay, and then Kathy, and then Becky. So, uh, um, am I allowed to share a screen or no? Uh, I'd have to make it possible. Oh, okay. You know what? Then I will just show my iPad really fast. Okay. I want um, other people to go. So let me turn on video. Okay. Hopefully. Cool. Okay, great. So yeah. I really love, I love <laughs> how you ink. So I was like totally just like riffing off of having really <laughs> thick brushes and trying to find the closest thing to a Sharpie I have. Yeah. So yeah, it's a typical white lady ghost. She's <laughs> great. Yeah, I like the outstretched well, hand. Yeah, I like the yeah. immediately know what her deal is. She yes, has been yeah. either jilted or hates you, uh, and or Ooh. wants you to marry her. All of those <laughs> things. <laughs> and yeah. yes, so, so, I mean, I'll post the brush, but I want more people to go. So I am ending it. Thanks, Andy. We'll talk about Dragon Age on Twitter. Bye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. We're gonna Shay next. Let's see. There we go. Hello. So my son doesn't want to be on camera, but he's 10 and he drew um, this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's and awesome. he's a big fan of That's incredible. Freddy's and he's a big fan of Little Nightmares um, move, or video games too. So he drew some Little Nightmare people just from Love his it. video game. Oh, that's great. You see, he's, got, he's doing the eyes thing. And the teeth thing. <laughs> yeah. And when he was watching you do the first one, he drew something kind of like. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Eyes. Wow. I'm telling you, the millions of eyes. It's people have been thinking about this lately. And I was I was just like kind of doodling what you were doodling along. Except my people are never scary. I'm not good at horror stuff. Right. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> great. Very that one's great. My son is the horror jeans. This is mine. Mine look like they were more made by a kid or something. Not... I like the the YA rom com Frankenstein. Uh, look. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Awesome. This is fun though. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shay. All right, Kathy next. Here we go. Hi. Hello. Oh, this was so great. Um, so I had um, I had a little procedure on my hand today. So I had to draw left-handed, uh -huh. uh, which I'm so grateful for. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it adds to the ambience. Yeah. So this was, I was trying to do your, awesome. your uh, Frankenstein and it went in a totally different direction. But um, wow. Very organic. I know. Ooh, I, really uh, like I like how it's like this fairy tale creature that kind of like got, uh, oh, like something happened, something bad happened to this person. So yeah, yeah. I love the whole like corrupted fairy tale creature. I know. Movie. And then I was following along on your other one. I really seriously left-handed is where it is at. Because people <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yes. Oh yeah. wow. No, I really <laughs> like it. I just well followed done. along with what you were saying about like hairy and long nails and long legs and yep. eye elongation. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Eyes. So thank you so much. Thank cool. you. Awesome, Kathy. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Becky. Um, there we go. Hello. Hi, thank you. Um, so I'm not done coloring mine in yet. Mine, I think it didn't end up really being all that scary, but I, still I, a monster. I recently had the opportunity to see an octopus in real life, which was 
pretty oh. uh, like in its own environment, which was amazing. So oh, cool. that kind of showed up here. And then I'd also kind of wound up looking a little bit like a, like a pickle. Um, <laughs> and then I think the things you were saying about being like a Gen Xer and having like Little Orphan Nanny, uh, one of my favorite books as a kid was Lyle, Lyle Crocodile. And I sort of felt oh, like that, that kind of yeah. came through here with just with like the gentle watercolor. So thanks, this was really fun. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Marlene. And there we go. Oh. <laughs> wow. I love that these are getting goofier. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not very good at this. And like Kathy, <laughs> I've also got a broken arm. So oh, no. I just um, sort of tried. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a scary <laughs> Spanish dragon with yes. claws. A uh, little um, antenna for ESP to find out where the victims are. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Scary, slinky eyes with dots in the middle. Sharp <laughs> teeth. Don't be fooled by those teeth because they are very sharp and will bite. <laughs> and the body is sort of uh, like snake-like and curls up. So it has retractability going forward and backwards. Ah, it kind and of scuttles. <laughs> nice. Very strong legs uh, and sharp claws to, to dig into the victim. Excellent. And, uh, excellent. They, that little uh, image uh, to the side is me thinking, ooh, I'm very scared <laughs> now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. So thank you, Andy. This was mm -hmm. uh, fun for me. <laughs> thank you. I love trying to imagine how everybody's monsters are going to move, you know quietly in the night terrifying me it's gonna be great awesome thanks okay awesome. we'll go to stevie next hello mm -hmm. i think you guys' volume is off possibly yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. is that on jolly to the rescue oh, no. <laughs> I can't help them. They're too far away. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, Stevie, you. you're so muted. <laughs> like, can you maybe just show the picture and type in chat? Yeah, they're not actually muted. Something else is going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can swap around. Yeah, we can swap. Order. Yeah. <laughs> right, Stevie says we'll check back. OK, so we'll skip to uh, Milez, and then um, we'll come back to Stevie as soon as they're ready. Stevie, when you guys are ready, um, just Hello. Oh, 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 we did are it. You, is it working now? Yes. No. I don't know. Now is it wait, can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I can hear you. Okay, that's so weird. I don't know why. For some my mic has been having issues, so I apologize. Uh, but I'll let Brett go first. Cool. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm just gonna show one of the the doodles I did the most developed. <laughs> nice. I'm a collector. Oh, he has awesome. big, yeah, just big creepy eyes and spider legs and a bucket full of eyeballs. It's, it's the bucket that does it, really. The bucket. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah they're day. all fresh because they're still full of blood. Um, I did two things. So I, I didn't really go for scary. I went for things that I I don't want to say I like, um, but I drew, I like, uh, I, just like I drew like a skaven with like a little eyeball on his eye and he's just kind of... <laughs> Ellie, he's just kind of scary looking. And yeah. then I drew this, which I drew during the game of uh, Jackbox. And this is, this is nice. Angel Hands Harry. But, <laughs> it was fun. I actually really liked the way he came out. Um, yeah. I really liked when him. That was actually like one thing I was like, I like was going to try drawing a third monster, but I was like, no, I really like this this one. I she's just really into his weird hands. And like, I drew a sketch where he like had gloves that weren't quite fitting because he's he's got angels underneath his hands. Nice. I love the whole dark magician thing, just as a general aesthetic. Yeah, I definitely was like, oh, let's just give him like a tail coat. Like, you know what he's he's gonna he's into. <laughs> gonna pull a dead rabbit out of the hat, probably. I was gonna him. try to make him in the rat friends, but I was like, no, I I just wanted to draw. More. I just got really into inking Harry, so I just finished. Nice. It. <laughs> cool. Right. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Sweet. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, next. Thank you. Um, if they're ready. Thank you. So I'm not seeing a chance to showcase. Ah, there we go. Okay. Awesome. Hello. 
Oh, oh mute. Are we oh, muted? Oh no. Got that Stevie can help. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's uh, crowdsource assistance. <laughs> We hear you now. No. <laughs> no? It was it was a cruel lie. Yeah. Did you know that uh, apparently they used to pipe Muzak into factories and offices to try to improve people's performance, which sounds horrifying. Yeah. 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 And just the opposite effect. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, at least we can we come. We could switch around the queue or? Yeah. Yeah. We'll go to Sally and we'll come back to you, Elise, as soon as you can figure it out. Otherwise, we can also, you can also show us and do it in the chat, but let's go to, we'll go to Sally really quick. Um, uh, yes. so, <laughs> I, I have this monster in my house, actually, but he's not. <laughs> it's kind of more of a raven than an, a parrot, but he wants his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I like the uh, glasses. Here, oh, he resents the whole information that he's mean. But <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. Um, that was fun. <laughs> great. That was cool. fun. Um, I love seeing people's pets, by the way. If you guys have assorted pets, uh, please show them to me. Assorted. Um, okay, sorted. We'll, James, we'll check in real fast with me, Lace. Any, any luck on the sound? Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. Hi. Hi. Hello. I don't know what happened? I didn't change anything. I just okay. muted and unmuted again. That's so but, okay, let me get mine. So I have Ooh. a snail shell, and I'm just like, the scary thing about it is that you don't know what's going to come out of it. <laughs> so I'm like, what if whatever came out of it just kept coming? I love Ooh. that. That is horrifying. Yeah. That's so That's cool. Scary. <laughs> And oh, then it just, I, I was going to do like segmented like a worm and then I was mm. like put a face on it and I'm like no that looks like snout so it's like it can smell oh. a lot. The little hairs are perfect. Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. texture makes it scarier because it's not yeah. quite what you're expecting coming out of the, right. uh, the shell. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then I made it fleshy because I'm like well it's clearly got animal parts so I made the shell more kind of like oh, oh yeah. yeah. I see the stitches esque. Yeah. Yeah. Very Jinji yeah. Ito also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To know. Ooh, Ooh yes. Yes. Excellent. Cool. Look at you. Cool. Thanks so much. Um, Miles. That's so great. Miles, is that right? Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. All right. All right. We'll go to James next. Uh, hey, yeah. I did my monster digitally, and I'm actually not sure how to make that visible to y'all without sharing my screen. So I might just contribute uh, uh, later and, you know. Okay. Make sure we have time for other people. Sure. Okay. We'll figure okay. out the screen sharing thing with the people who are screen sharing. Um, let's see. Give me a second. Um, okay. You now have the freedom to try that. Okay. Give it a shot. So I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if folks can see the creature here. Oh, oh <laughs> sick. Yes. Good Lord. Yeah, we see it. Oh, it's guys really took the fleshy dampness to heart. Yeah. <laughs> very loosely based on Mitch McConnell, a rodent. <laughs> and Perfection. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all in on that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, James. Thanks so much. Love you can it. kind of imagine the sound it makes. Oh, that's another thing. Imagining the horrible sounds these things are going to make. Skittering <laughs> and kind of sluicing on the floor. I know that you can't hear comics, but you can letter them. Oh, you can feel the sound. All right, we'll go to Jeff. Let's see. Oh, Hi, guys. Okay. Whoa. Ah, <gasps> oh, sick. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about Swamp Thing, and I thought, well, what if he evolved from coral and coral reefs? Like, he had all these, like, weird coral hands, and he's all kind of spindly, and he's got gills on his arms and stuff, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Ta changing the actual environment environment. 
Right. <laughs> right, totally. And then, then I started drawing this other thing. And I, what is this? And I said, oh, it's the most scary tree stump in the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice, the branch arms. <laughs> right, exactly, right. And then he makes little shoots and grows little tree stumps next to him and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's rad. I love that people can make even trees gross. Are trees <laughs> naturally gross? <laughs> they kind of are. <laughs> That's Sick. Thank Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Jamie next. Jamie, when you get your video on, we'll set you up. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got horrible lighting again I know. and a horrible we drawing. But I we know how it is. Cover my shit. He's over my shit. All right. Hi, here I am. Here's what I drew. Uh, he's a he's got He's a baby, so he ran away from his mom. So she's somewhere else in the ocean. And he's playing around with his hand puppets. And that's the surfer who's unfortunate enough to be in his presence. Oh, and he's he's like a baby, but he's old. He's like I really wish I could see this. I do too. Jamie. Jamie, you're Can you post it? Okay, so that's we got a crowd source for Jamie's wife. What? Yeah, I gotta see this. Oh, yeah, I know. It's because he, you know, all right. Well, anyway, all right. He's got a beard and like little uh, monsters are in his beard. And sorry, I'll post it on social media. <laughs> please. I would love to see see me. Oh, please. Uh, I, he, yeah. he, looks, he looks like Loch Ness Monster, but he has shark puppy. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, I think we said Susanna was next. Hello. Hello. I have the um, Cheeseman Sewage Old Stacked Plumbing Monster. Ooh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good Lord. And oh. these are seriously gross. Ew. I was trying to, yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, I, I just, I'll figure out all the ways to make it gross, non gross, but yeah, too many tampons in the, Toilet, and toilet oh, like with the fat birds and stuff. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, and, and nice. the scrunchies. I don't know how scrunchies. Like, who throws scrunchies down the toilet? But apparently, somebody did at some point. And this is the the building is actually it's a multi, um, like a, a you know multi living unit. Um, there are a lot of multi unit high rises in this area that used to be a cemetery, and um, so they took out all this the graves. And this is still part oh. of the bandstand that was there. And they oh. made a park. It's a very, like, really nice park. Um, I love going to the park, drawing in the park. But there are sewage problems galore, especially mm -hmm. in all the buildings. Oh, oh man. Built, like, before. <laughs> uh, Whoa. Like, awesome. Old stack plumbing. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. And sometimes I hear from people who live on farms and the things that they say about, you know, assorted sewage solutions is just. <laughs> well, I'm also trying to convey that. it. I mean, the uh, someone on the board actually asked if I could, like, you know, write something to try to explain it in a way that was like sort oh, of yeah. friendly. Because I guess I've written notes that have been like okay and friendly, and maybe it's also because it's easier for me to talk about things like tampons in the toilet than it is for them. <laughs> but I'm not sure if I'll show this to them. <laughs> it does get the message across. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you. Troy next, then Katya, then Bruce. Um, Hello. Hi. Hey. Scared you. <laughs> it's thematic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Ah, sweet. Oh. Yes. Wow. Eating a bunga. I'm wow. reading your, your notes. Dire wow. monkey. That's great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ooh. I like that you put the uh, the scope, the size, so you've got the uncanny largeness. Things that are about seven to ten feet tall tend to be just big enough to scare you. Giants aren't very scary for some reason. I wonder why that is. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, oh, sick. Yes, the textures. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, a lot of horror tradition or horror cartoon tradition definitely comes from cribbing like animals for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the biological that's sick cool Troy. thanks so much awesome. right. thank you we'll go to katya next thank you there we go hello this was hello. i absolutely love this oh, <laughs> oh yes i don't even know what this is 
<laughs> That's rad. I'm doing that. Wow. Oh. Talk about textures. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you guys are really uh, the millions of tiny eyes. The terrifying <laughs> thing about the, the that specific. Some of them What's are, the word for that? Yeah. And some of them are like warty pustules. Yeah. Some of them are eggs. And the eggs oh. fall off the back eggs when they so hit the scary. ground. They oh. And then they're <laughs> That's a. I can actually hear and see that. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> These are great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Bruce. Uh, Bruce is. Oh, this is a Native American uh, uh, creature called the uh, Bakwa and it's spelled just the way it's pronounced. And this is an ogre. Oh, neat! Whoa. Wow. Never. He's never full. He's always hungry. Mm. Yeah. Don't hug. Do yeah. not hug. Gotta eat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's something Thanks. real scary about it. there's a this Chinese ghost tradition, hungry ghosts, which is if you screw up really bad in your life, you may come back as a ghost who's never full, which honestly terrifying. My mom used to scare me like that sometimes. You know, I'm Chinese, so she says <laughs> stuff. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, I love the incorporation of the census thing. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Yeah, somebody recognizes the hungry ghost <laughs> in oh, chat. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Bruce, um, Michael will be our last one. So let's go to Michael. Hey, this is a monster oh. that mostly Ooh. crawls, but it also can fly and creep up on you, which is why it has the two propellers. It also oh, nice. has all these mouths with sharp teeth all over. It has a it has a grabber and it has a couple of sharp things it can stab you can stab things yeah. with and a tail. <laughs> <laughs> the combo of the, the tentacles and sort of needles is there's something real creepy about that. Mm-hmm. Like it could hurt itself, but it's good enough not to. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying. Right. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Um, wow. Thanks. Um, so Andy, I'm going to spotlight you for a second, or at least me, Michaels. Um, well, Andy, thanks. You really got some cool monsters out of us. Thanks for showing me your monsters, y'all. Like, yeah. oh wait, let me type in you. If you post these, you should write their backstories and tag me, and I am gonna. Yeah, we got you in the chat. You're oh sweet, suited devil, right? Yes, I am that on everywhere, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and yeah. And if you did get a chance to show me your monsters, I want to see how creepy everyone got. This was so sick. Like, y'all are scared of multiple eyes and lotuses too, huh? <laughs> yeah, you give us a lot to think about. Some of us have drawn like maybe fantasy characters or other things in the past, but maybe we haven't thought about it in that sort of organized way, thinking about the, the senses, you know, and thinking about some of, some of some of the adaptations a monster might have to have made from to make up for other sort of shortcomings or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. And a lot of it's based off of, you know, movies, of course, because they had to kind of come up with a lot of the practical solutions to how things moved. But, you know, there's so much you can do with that, honestly. Yeah. So thanks so much. Everybody, um, maybe unmute for a second. We'll thank Andy and then we can go about the rest of our evening. Andy, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, so thanks for having me, Andy. It was so Andy. fun. Thank you so much. After party is in the chat. You can join Susan at the after party. And Join us next week. We're going to do a celebration of the of the year-long program students and do some doodling at the same time. So oh, great. Join us. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you on Tuesday. Thank you. Bye.